right, let's talk a little bit about a pyramid, first of all. <clears throat> you see that they're quite a bit different than prisms. First of all, they only have one base, and only one base. Um, and then they have something called an apex, which is the point in which they come to. You'll notice their lateral sides are triangular and not, uh, and not rectangular, like in the case of the prisms. Um, they also have kind of uh, some different terminology as well, um, other than just, you also have a base, like what, what, it, um, what it's sitting on here is its base, and so a square base or a square base or a hexagonal base or a triangular base and so on, and they get named by that, like this would be, you know, a square um, pyramid, a rectangular pyramid, a, a um, hexagonal pyramid and so on, named by the base. And um, there's always a height, which is the perpendicular distance from the apex to the base, uh, would be the height. And in a right prism, which uh, pyramid, which we're looking at, it would be right over the center of the shape. And so this would be the center of the square, the center of the square, and so on. Um, then you have a distance here. Now that distance is an apothem, is what it actually is, which is the distance from the center perpendicular to a side center to perpendicular side, center to perpendicular side. So um, it's the apothem. And then L, uh, little l, script l, refers to what's called the slanted height. That's the actual height that's out on the face uh, of that. It, out on that face is the slanted height. And then the last thing is um, these guys here are called uh, lateral edges. Um, these are uh, the edges of the triangular uh, lateral sides and they're called edges but in this case they're the lateral edges these would be base edges down here and then there's the lateral edges. So um, let me show you how um, oh I know um, in terms of the relationship here because we're not going straight up like we are in a prism we are coming to a point uh, we would have done a little bit of an, ex, uh, an experiment where we take some volume beans or water or whatever to um, approximate or to determine the relationship. And we find that this guy, well let's think about it this way. Um, let's say this is our, our, our pyramid or our prism here. Um, if we were to take the pyramid that fits in there we took this guy and made it into a pyramid. Let's see if I can kind of draw that for you, uh, rough sense. If there was a pyramid inside of that, it would be exactly one third of the total volume. So um, that can be done in a couple of informal ways, but ultimately at this stage, uh, I'm just gonna use that relationship. So the volume is one third BH, Let's put some numbers up here and get rolling. So let's say this is uh, six. Uh, we'll call this a square pyramid. You'd want to know that, of course. And then let's say this is eight. So uh, what we would do in this case is we would say the volume is one third, uh, the area of the base, which is six times six. And then the height in this case is just uh, good old fashioned eight. So we would multiply these numbers together and obtain the goal. And so we get uh, 36 divided by three times eight is 96, 96 centimeters cubed. One base, six times six, and then our height is provided for us. Now before I move on, let me show you another trick that they like to pull. Uh, let's see here. Let's make the lateral edge a five, and let's say we do not know our height. So when we get here, we're like, okay, we're missing some pieces. Well, we know the base is six times six. That's all good. But we're like, wait a minute, there's no height provided. How do we find the height? Well, here is a common trick. Notice this six is the side. Remember how we said this is the apothem, and it would be exactly half of that. So this would be three. And now I have a little triangle with a three an unknown side and a five, and it's a right triangle. I'd use the Pythagorean theorem, 
3 squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. And sure enough, I would find 4 to be the number. And then I would just simply do the math here. I would take a 36 and divide it by 3 and multiply it by 4. And I would get 48 centimeters cubed. What I wanted to show you there is that idea of using a measurement here to help you in here. Common, common thing that happens. Let's do it again here. Um, let's show you another uh, uh, ugly trick. Let's make, um, let's see, let's make this, uh, let's make it work here. Let's make this 8 and make this 17. Now this is actually giving you the lateral edge this time. We're going to call this a square pyramid because that will help us out again. Volume equals one-third base times height. And the base in this case is this 8 happens to be from here to here. So that would be 16 times 16 times the height. The work we have to do is finding the height. And this is very typical. That's why I'm doing it for you. What they gave us is the information here in the, in the guy on the outside with the lateral edge of 17. This guy is 8. And the slant height in this case, do you see how I'm out on the face there, is what I'm looking to solve. If I do the Pythagorean theorem, I picked a nice number, you're going to find we get 15. Now 15 is not even our answer yet. 15 is our slant height. Um, the distance from here to here is also uh, is eight, uh, 8, yes, because remember how we said it's 8 to here and then 8 to the other part, so it's 8 right here. So I would actually have to solve this one more time to get the actual height. This isn't going to be as friendly a number. I would do, uh, I'll quickly do it, I can't talk and do it at the same time. But if I do do the math here, I'm going to find that x, which happens to be our height, is 12.69. That goes into this spot at 12.69. And then I multiply that by 256 and divide by 3. And do a little rounding, I get 1,082.76 centimeters cubed. So that one was doubly tricky, but I wanted to show you one like that. And the reason it was tricky is I, I was working out here on this front face, and then I had to go into the inner triangle to get the actual height. Kind of a cool thing. Let's get one more in. I'm going, going fast and hard here. Um, let's show you how to do a hexagon. And let's think about what they want to give us. Let's just give us the height to make our life easy. Let's say that height is 20. And then let's just say they give us that apothem length. Um, I don't know, let's say it's uh, 6 will be that. So um, you and I know that uh, volume is one base, uh, oops, I gotta, don't forget my one third, volume is one third the base times the height. The base in this case is the tricky piece. I have a, uh, a hexagon with an apothem of 6. Now, whew, I picked a tricky one, but let's do it because it'll be good for you. Um, take a look here. This is a 30, 60, 90. The long side is, is 6, and so we're going to divide by root 3. When you take 6 and divide it by root 3, you get 6 root 3 over 3, or in other words, 2 root 3. So this is 2 root 3. All right, now I'm ready to go. The base is one half the apothem, which is six, times the perimeter. Now each side is two root three, and two root three is four root three. And when you do four root three times six, you get 24 root three. Now all of that is the base, and then the height of this guy was 20. Let's give you a quick little uh, reteach on this, because this is good, this is good math. All right, we know one half the apothem times the perimeter. One half is there. Six was given to us as the apothem. Now the perimeter was trickier. We had to divide by root three to get the short leg. 
And when we did that, we got two root three, and that's half of a side. So the whole side is a four root three times six, which is 24 root three. The height is 20. Let's get the number here. Uh, it's not actually too bad. Uh, it'll be 480 root three, 480 root three centimeters cubed. Well, I ended up doing a couple of trickies, but it's okay to have somebody do the trickies to give you an idea how to do them. Good luck with some of these problems. They're fun. Keep in mind one third the base times the height.